Welcome back to another edition of Where Healing Begins here on WJR. As always, we're happy to have alongside Dr. Tammy Peterson from the Oxford Recovery Center. Hopefully you had a great start to the new year, Dr. Tammy. Oh, I did. Thank you. And you have some exciting information you wanted to share with our listeners today. I understand that there's some new evidence that hyperbaric oxygen therapy can help with aging. We're all ears. <laughs> yes, Marie. Dr. Efrati from Tel Aviv University and the Shamir Medical Center in Israel led a groundbreaking study which found hyperbaric oxygen therapy in aging adults can stop the aging of blood cells and reverse the aging process. I have our medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner, with me here to help explain how hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, can help us reverse the aging process. So stay with us here on WJR as Dr. Tammy Peterson from the Oxford Recovery Center is joined by Dr. Christian Bogner. When we come back, we're going to talk about hyperbaric oxygen therapy and how it can help stave off aging. Stay right here on WJR. And welcome back to Where Healing Begins. Today, we're talking about aging and its connection to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So having discussed hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, as they call it on some previous episodes of Where Healing Begins, I understand that HBOT helps people recover from many medical conditions. And to further explain, we have medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner joining us. Dr. Bogner, can you give us an overview on what the new revelations are coming out of Israel about aging and HBOT? Yes, thank you so much for having us. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you, to, to your crew at WJR. I know you guys are all working hard, and we appreciate the opportunity to share this information with you and your listeners. Um, right now, we actually appear to be reaching a critical time in, in medicine, particularly in the realms of regenerative medicine. Um, and Dr. Shea Efrati uh, is involved with hyperbaric oxygen therapy in Israel, and his team is specifically focusing on Alzheimer's and uh, anti-aging. And about two months ago, um, they published a paper in the journal Aging. And what they looked at was if hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is involving breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized environment, if that could reverse the effects of aging in patients that were over the age of 64. So what they did, they placed 35 uh, of these patients and participants in the chamber every day for about one and a half hours, five times a week for three months. Now, here's where it gets very interesting. And I would love to come on to just expand uh, into much more detail on this very uh, discovery. But I want you to really picture this. You go into a chamber and you breathe 100% oxygen, which is five times more concentrated oxygen that you're breathing right now. And then you increase the pressure around you which is equivalent to about 33 feet being underwater, so much that the oxygen dissolves in your plasma and tissues uh, do not require um, uh, oxygen to be carried by red blood cells. So they're dissolved in the plasma. Uh, This way, uh, the oxygen reaches tissue up to four times deeper. So you read this, and while relaxing, in an almost euphoric environment like this, every cell gets this mega burst of oxygen all the way into the deep bone marrow. Now you do this for 60 days and it's absolutely amazing for your body. Anyway, what they did, they asked two questions. The first question was, did the therapy somehow affect our DNA? And number two, was there any benefit to old cells that lost the ability to divide? And interestingly, they found that the oxygen exposure did affect the DNA. It restored the little tips of the DNA we call telomeres uh, in certain immune cells that measured that, and it it, uh, lengthened them and it restored them by up to 20 to 30%, depending on which immune cell they looked at. And this percentage, the 20 to 30%, generally uh, this amount gets lost over about 25 year lifespan when they calculated that. This means that hyperbaric oxygen regenerated the cell's DNA closer to its original copy. The implications are uh, longer uh, abilities of these cells to divide, 
and they are also more robust and uh, in a more protective shape against free radical DNA damage. So wait, you said the oxygen makes the telomeres longer? As much as so, I had lost over 25 years? Oh, wait a second. I want to look 25 years younger. So how does this work? How can oxygen really help the, to reverse this process? Well, we all know that disease is most often a result of underlying inflammation. When you have inflammation on a cellular level, it is about survival for the cell. So there's a lot going on. And so a lot can go wrong too. But often it just takes a long time to heal. And you, know, you can have complications along the way. Uh, the repair process heavily depends and is powered by oxygen. Now, if you have inflammation, then there usually is a lot of swelling. A lot of immune cells want to clean up. So it's often hard for oxygen to reach areas that are really drowning in this uh, swelling and leaving that area deprived of oxygen because of the swelling. This is where hyperbaric oxygen comes in. It will reach those areas because of the pressure that we use. And again, it's about the equivalent of being 33 feet underwater. It's a lot of uh, pressure. And you're breathing 100% oxygen. And remember, the oxygen does not need to be bound to a red blood cell. It just dissolves in your plasma. And this way, uh, it was shown um, that it dissolves and reaches tissues four times deeper. So not only is the swelling really greatly reduced, but at the same time, we reduce free radicals. And as we have discussed, these radicals shorten our telomeres. It literally makes the cell stronger and gives it about 25 more years of replicative potential. Interestingly, different organs have different cells that again have different replicative cycle potentials. For example, a muscle cell has much stronger telomeres than a skin cell. So a telomere is kind of like a ruler with our lifespan. And if I'm hearing you right, then hyperbarics, because of the telomeres, will actually repair and tighten up my skin on a cellular level. Yes, Tammy. Um, we actually knew for a little over a decade now that hyperbaric oxygen can increase circulating stem cells, which was shown at the University of Pennsylvania uh, by Dr. Tom uh, about 14 years ago in 2006. But the implications of this are so large, it is not surprising that the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine last year went to three researchers from the United States and the United Kingdom who discovered how cells sense and adapt to oxygen. We're just scratching the surface of this uh, incredible regenerative potential of hyperbaric oxygen. And I'm not just saying this. We see breakthrough, breakthroughs in our clinic every day. So, and we're going to learn more about this when we come back here on Where Healing Begins on WJR. Stay with us. Welcome back to Where Healing Begins here on WJR. Our special guest today, Dr. Tammy Peterson, alongside medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner. And we're talking about an interesting link that's been discovered through some research uh, between hyperbaric oxygen therapy and aging. Dr. Tammy Peterson, I know this is a very hot topic these days, so tell us more. So what Dr. Bogner, you were telling us is that by simply being in a hyperbaric chamber with 100% oxygen at about 33 feet below sea level or 2 ATA, we can actually be healing our body while reversing the aging process. But let's say someone's had a stroke. They're not as concerned about having younger looking skin or hair, but they need some more help. How would hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the telomeres help in this situation? Yeah, great question, Tammy. Now, in a stroke, uh, we have an area in the brain that has sudden loss of oxygen to the point of actual irreversible cell death. The, this area that just died uh, releases signals to the immune system to come and clean up. And this is actually what creates rapidly spreading inflammation after you uh, had a stroke. So the cells that surrounded the stroke and survived are now at risk of dying as well because of that uh, increasing inflammation. It's like a traffic jam um, of immune cells trying to clean up. And then that creates the lack of oxygen that we have discussed. Now, hyperbaric oxygen will provide the neurons that survived around the area of the stroke 
uh, from cell death. So it will limit the spread of inflammation greatly. In addition, it will stimulate a molecule called BDNF, which is standing for brain-derived neurotropic factor. And that is a molecule that stimulates uh, the brain stem cells called NPC cells, neuronal progenitor cells. And uh, they will start patching up the area that have the dead neurons. So you still need PT, speech, and all the other therapies, including OT, uh, that you usually get. But we believe that the hyperbaric oxygen, because of that process, can accelerate the healing. So with strokes, the hyperbaric actually heals the damage to the brain. I know we've been treating strokes for years, and we have found out that our intense therapies with the hyperbarics gives the best outcome. However, it sounds like to me that the best time to treat is before I have a stroke, as preventative. From what we've learned about the telomeres and hyperbarics, could other conditions be prevented or helped? Yes. In fact, the longer the telomere on the DNA, the more protected the DNA and the more times it can replicate itself throughout a lifetime. You know, a cell has the average of 60 to 70. Uh, 70 cycles of uh, replication. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen lengthens our telomeres. This is at least theoretically strongly suggesting that it could prevent heart disease, arth atherosclerosis, autoimmune disease, and possibly cancer. Or at least it would lower your risk of getting these diseases when you were uh, about a quarter century younger. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface uh, here, but when we treat our cancer patients, I always remind those patients that inflammation potentiates a cancer's metastatic potential. Interestingly, we just learned that oxygen reduces inflammation. So you do the math. So it sounds like inflammation is the root cause of many diseases from autoimmune disease to cancer. So if being in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber reduces inflammation, it not only helps in preventing the disease, but also enhancing the immune response to managing the conditions. You're listening to Where Healing Begins here on WJR with Dr. Tammy Peterson. As always, she's our guest for this special edition of Where Healing Begins. And alongside is the medical director, Dr. Christian Wagner. Fascinating chat here about aging and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So let's discuss all of this in a little more detail. The Efrati study expands into wellness. Can you talk a little more about the effects of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and telomeres on the entire aging process? Yes. Uh, in fact, it's very interesting. In 1943, in 83, and in 2009, the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology went to researchers discovering and studying telomeres. This is, in my opinion, uh, and in our opinion, one of the most cutting edge areas in medical research because we are now able to literally regenerate telomeres. And this is, uh, in return, making the DNA less susceptible to inflammation and other fa factors that try to interfere with this process. But why do we age at different rates? Well, that's a very good question. And people have been asking this question for millennia, probably since we first uh, were able to count the years uh, and compare ourselves to our neighbors. How can one person walk in the sunshine of good health while the other person in the same age group uh, suffers in the shadow of annoying diseases? Can you choose which experience happens to you? Do you ever talk to someone and uh, they're your age and you think to yourself, oh man, I look so much older. Uh, we strangely tend to have nicer days when the opposite uh, happens, right? When the other patient uh, or person that you talk to looks older. But uh, why is that? You hear explanations like, oh, her parents probably uh, have heart problems too and they have bad joints. Uh, it's all in your DNA. She has unlucky genes. Uh, but the question is, who's really responsible? Is it nature or nurture? Is it our genes or is it the environment? And the answer is both. Both are very critical, and it's the interaction between those two that matters most. Now, the real differences between different rates of aging among people lies in the complex interactions between genes, social relationships, the environmental factors, lifestyle, those twists of fate in your life, and especially how one responds to those twists of fate. 
I personally feel that stress, particularly elevations in adrenaline and problems of genetically dealing with this high adrenaline are very dangerous, if not probably addressed. And that's uh, affecting your physical and your psychiatric health. Uh, you're born with a particular set of genes, but the way you live can influence how your genes express themselves. So what you're saying is your genes don't control your destiny, but you do through your life choices. Absolutely. Uh, we know this from studies with, for example, identical twins. How can one of the twins be uh, suffering from, for example, schizophrenia, and the other one is not? When they have the exact same genes, they have different influences in their life on their genes. It's really that simple. Almost every disease that comes with aging could potentially be helped with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And so here we have found a new way of thinking about human aging. And by we, I mean us as a human collective. One current predominantly scientific view of human aging is that the DNA of our cells becomes progressively damaged causing cells to become irreversibly aged and dysfunctional. Why did it become damaged, though? The answers point towards telomeres as the major culprit. Now, the extraordinary discovery from research labs around the world is that the ends of our uh, telomeres shorten over time, sure, but they also can actually lengthen, and that's the uh, great discovery. And as a result of that, aging uh, is now defined as a more dynamic process that can be accelerated or slowed, and in some aspects, even reversed. We all will get older by the digits, no doubt, but how we age is very much dependent on our cellular health and specifically the telomere length. And then what are some signs of aging? Well, we all know the signs of aging, heart disease, arthritis, a weakened immune system, diabetes, cancer, lung disease, and many more. Our skin and hair become older looking too, of course. But to add to the beauty of aging, diseases tend to come in clusters. So it's not that you just have one, like a rundown immune system when you're in your 60s, but you also have joint pain and early signs of heart disease and, and, and. Now, this is literally... Uh, programmed decay by oxidation as we age. Sorry to be so blunt, but that's really what's happening. We're oxidizing. You just have to understand that we can now interfere with this process. We cannot stop it, but we can interfere. So what you're telling us is the research has shown that all these signs of aging you just listed are reflected in our telomere links that can be reversed with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. But I'm still confused. With what exactly are those telomeres? And how do they change in length? And what do telomeres have to do with our DNA and our genes? And Dr. Tammy, these are big questions that we need to have some answers on. We're going to want to know more about these telomeres. And we'll take a look at that when we come back here on Where Healing Begins on WJR. We're back with Where Healing Begins, our special guest, of course, Dr. Tammy Peterson. Always happy to have her here, along with her medical director, Dr. Christian Wagner, talking about some new research on hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the link to aging. And Dr. Wagner, I don't know a single person who doesn't want to look younger. And I find that younger people are also interested in this topic. In their 20s and 30s, I think they're realizing you need to put the effort in when you're younger to maintain your, your youth and your vitality. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely, Marie. Um, the idea about telomeres is, is very complex, but it's very fascinating. So let's try to see what is really happening. Um, when we really zoom into our uh, central structure, molecular structure of our DNA, it gets really interesting. Since the gene sequences of our DNA are on a string, and if you measure it, the total base pair length is about 3 billion base pairs. And if you would put that vertically on top of each other, it would be about a little bit over six feet tall. Now, how do you fit all of this into the tiny nucleus of a cell? Now, if you think about pulling apart two ends of a rubber band and then you twist the ends in opposite directions, after a while, a lot of tension, tension will have built up uh, between those ends to the point that the band has coiled into itself with a lot of tension. 
the rubber band holds a lot of kinetic energy and so does our DNA. Um, it's very vibrant at that point. The more you twist, the more times it can replicate itself. But in order to hold the tension in place at the end tips of the DNA, which by the way comes in 23 pairs of chromosomes, you tie up the ends of the chromosomes in a knot. The bigger the knot, the more tension it holds, the more coils in the DNA. And this knot is what a telomere really is. So this, this knot or the telomeres are actually really helpful so chromosomes won't fuse together. But more importantly, you can imagine that they keep the extreme tension. It keeps the DNA snuck in tightly as the tension hides and protects the genes from free radicals and other uh, substances that can cause mutations. If you have that much tension, the density increases and provides less areas of attack on the DNA. The telomeres uh, explain how we run out of the ability to replenish tissue, and we call that replicative senescence. There are other ways, of course, uh, how cells can become dysfunctional or die early, and there are other factors that contribute to human aging, but telomere shortening or telomere attrition if you want to use the medical term, is a clear and an early contributor to the aging process. And more exciting, it is possible to slow or even reverse that attrition in as far as we know right now in specific cell groups. So telomeres are like caps that keep the coiled DNA inside the cell. Free radicals are always attacking the telomeres, shortening them, and allowing the DNA to uncoil a little more every time the cell divides. Because there's less tension, the DNA is looser and then exposed to those radicals or other toxins. So our genes within our DNA have to be protected and our telomeres protect our DNA by wrapping them in super coils to keep the tension. In hyperbarics, those coils get tighter, protecting our DNA, protecting our genes, making us younger and protecting us from disease or even reversing aging and disease. That's a very good example. When, when the telomeres shorten as we age, actually, the tension is giving in as it uncoils. Uh, more DNA is exposed to epigenetic influences, we call them, from the outside world. Every time a cell replicates, the exposure is bigger. That's why as we age, your risk of cancer, for example, goes up and sickness. The cell's DNA eventually cannot replicate itself any longer, and the cell becomes what we call senescent. It just sits there defenseless and then either falling victim to a mutation or possibly, uh, and possibly cancerous transformation, but most often simply just cell death. This is because of uh, what we call telomere exhaustion. It is a phenomenon we label uh, a cell uh, it has a Hayflick limit, the natural limit that human cells have for dividing. So the stop switch happens to be telomeres that have become critically short. Are all cells subject to this Hayflick limit? No. Throughout our bodies, we find cells that renew, including immune cells, bone cells, your gut cells, your lungs, liver cells, skin, hair, pancreatic cells, the cells that lie in our cardiovascular system, they all need to divide over and over and over to keep our bodies healthy. But we can certainly boost them up to make them stronger against free radical damage. Stem cells, for example, um, if they are kept healthy, keep dividing throughout our lifespans because of features that are subject to a discussion really by itself. But stem cells have uh, special features um, and they are certainly contributing to actual cell replenishment rather than just this tune-up that we were just talking about. For example, with Tammy, uh, why is she looking so good? Why are her joints moving so easy? It's one reason she can take uh, a deep lungful of breath of the cool air blowing outside. The new cells are constantly renewing essential body tissues and organs. Uh, cell renewal helps keep uh, Tammy feel younger in our patients. We now understand the how and why uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy helps to reverse the aging process and assist with disease prevention and treatment. So we'd like to talk now about what, what you do at the Oxford Recovery Center and how people may benefit from all of this. Dr. Tammy, before uh, we close out this segment, do you want to just give us a little taste of some of that? 
Absolutely. Um, so we don't just treat wellness. We treat all sorts of conditions. We've treated everything from age of premature baby to somebody who was 102 years old. So about every condition from wellness to um, different diseases. So it's really exciting what we do. We have two locations. We have a location in Brighton and one in Troy. We've been around for 13 years. And our staff, we have about 130 staff, including doctors, nurses, PTs, OTs, speech therapists, neurofeedback techs, and a full autism program. And as you said a little bit earlier in the interview, you're not just interested in reversing a process, you're also interested in helping to protect, protect youth, protect our health, as well as, again, reversing conditions that may have happened to somebody. Absolutely. It's really easy when we're in a trauma to say, I need help. But what we love is when somebody says, let me prevent it. You know, often as we age, um, we start losing a little balance or we find sometimes our cognitive um, speech. We're having issues with expressive language. Um, we may just have a, our gait a little off and we forget that these things can be helped. Um, occupational speech, physical therapy to our aging population is remarkable. It's not just for orthopedics and our OTPT and speech is specialized in our senior population who just needs some simple help, um, balance, cognitive functioning, but also the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. You know, it's so sad to me when somebody has worked so hard their whole life and then they have a stroke and they seem to have their whole retirement mm -hmm. stolen from them. I would love them to come in before that time to make time for our health, learn about everything from how we can eat healthy and enjoy it to how simply being in a wonderful environment like hyperbarics can help regenerate our cells and give us that longevity. Let us enjoy our retirement and how simply doing some occupational, physical or speech therapy, it doesn't have to be after an orthopedic surgery or knee replacement, but it can be just part of some things that are getting tight as we age. So there's a lot of benefits that we can offer our population. We are listening to Dr. Tammy Peterson, Where the Healing Begins. She's a special guest here at WJR who joins us several times a year to talk about new developments at the Oxford Recovery Center. And as she said, there are several locations throughout the metro area. Today, we've been really talking a lot about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It's linked to aging. The medical director at Oxford Recovery Center, the Dr. Christian Wagner joining us to talk a little bit about that link and some of this exciting research that is going on. When we come back, we'll recap for you. Stay with us. Welcome back to Where Healing Begins here on WJR. We want to recap on some of this exciting information that we were given today. More information about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, this time some links to aging and how it may help in the aging process. Dr. Tammy Peterson, of course, always joining us, along with her medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner. Dr. Bogner, so many of us feel like we have no control over our genetics, right? I was born with this. This is what I have. I can't change that. But I hear you saying uh, through your talk today that maybe we do have some control over our genetic destiny when it comes to our health. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Yes. In fact, that's a fascinating topic by itself. And this is the, the field of what we call epigenetics. So it's outside influences on our genes. As you uh, alluded cor correctly, genes don't express themselves constantly. They need a signal from the environment. To give you a perfect example, there's a biologist at Stanford. His name is uh, Bruce Lipton, and he's uh, well known. Um, and what he teaches is uh, you know, and he always uses a great example. What he did, he used a stem cell, and what he did, he replicated that stem cell until one stem cell became 30,000 stem cells. Now, all genetically exactly the same. He divided them up in three uh, segments, and each one he put in a three different uh, petri dishes, and the petri dishes had different growth mediums in them. One of them had a lot of acid. 
The other one had a lot of sugar. The last one was just normal. And he discovered that these stem cells adjusted to their environment to survive, uh, which basically means uh, that we are responding to the environment and not the other way around. And so we are in control of our destiny and what kind of food we put in our mouth. That's why we have an extensive uh, nutrition intervention program here at, at our center. But what we're really um, looking at is we're looking at the genes. We're doing genetic testing. And as you know, we have about 20,000 genes. And uh, what these genes do, they produce uh, something. They are simply blueprints to make a protein over and over and over. And remember, we have 20,000 of these little machines that make these building blocks. But sometimes we inherit weaker machines, weaker genes from our parents. And they, they still make the protein, but sometimes at a very slow rate. And so let's say now, for example, one of the genes makes something that counteracts inflammation. And now you uh, have a a party on the weekend and you, you eat and drink a lot and you have a lot of chemicals coming in, you have a lot of inflammation forming. Well, what if you don't really have that ability to counteract that with producing an antioxidant that is required to reduce the inflammation? And so one person feels uh, many more days sicker than the next person. But to, to give you um, an example of how deep we really uh, analyze these genes, for example, I have a patient come to me and the patient is suffering from anxiety. A lot of patients suffer from anxiety, and they don't, many don't even know about it. But in, in conventional medicine, you go to your uh, primary care physician and you tell them I have anxiety. Now, in medical school, I learned that anxiety, you know, is a symptom of depression, and depression is usually defined as uh, low levels of serotonin. And hence, I tell my primary care physician I'm anxious, and he will say, "Oh, you must be depressed." And so, one of the first line agents that he's prescribing me is an antidepressant. And the way these medications work, they block that uh, serotonin will be uh, broken down. So it sticks around longer. So it elevates your serotonin and the idea is that your depression will go away. The problem is, however, that high levels of serotonin also create anxiety. And, and so it's a big problem because now if your primary care doctor prescribes you an antidepressant, you go from high serotonin to even higher serotonin and high levels of serotonin create very uh, bad anxiety reactions to the, to the point that you can have a panic attack. And so if you think about it, it doesn't work. You start this medication, you go back to your primary care in four weeks, and what does he say? He say, well, it doesn't work, let's go up with the dose. What happens? You become more and more anxious, more and more panicky, and, and many people end their lives, they commit suicide. Think about why they had to add suicide to the black box warning of antidepressants. It's because we have no idea what we're doing. That's the real reason. So what we're doing, we're checking genes that break down neurotransmitters. We measure the neurotransmitters. You know, how would I know, for example, that you have two high levels of glycine, which is a neurotransmitter. Well, one of the symptoms of high glycine is cognitive processing problems. The treatment for that is L-arginine. How in the world would I know to treat you with arginine if I don't have that test result? And so what I have learned over the last three years of treating hundreds of patients based on their genetics is that there's absolutely, it's absolutely irresponsible, in my opinion, to just give something to someone hoping it works because it worked for the last patient. That's modern medicine for you uh, right there. It, it shouldn't work like this. It should be customized towards your genes, towards your neurotransmitters, and precisely target uh, the origins of what has caused the problem in the first place. And with the genetics, it's much more complex. I just gave you a, an example with the neurotransmitters, but we measure all of these things. We walk patients through do you have problems with inflammation? Do you have problems with cell repair genes? Do you have problems with methylation or breaking down adrenaline, for example? Um, are there consequences in between, uh, you know, if there are two genes that are uh, affected, maybe, you know, the sum of the effects of those two genes is bigger than each individual uh, gene being affected. All of that will be addressed. We give the patients plenty of opportunity to ask questions, to challenge what we're telling them. And then usually we come up with a regimen and these patients are followed very closely, um, and they're, it's, it's incredible what I've seen. I've been in attending for, for almost 15 years now. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing of uh, how well these patients respond, how we're changing lives, even in the most desperate cases. It's, it's really rewarding. Uh, so it's kind of that. like we used, well, we still, we treat a lot of concussions. It's a really common thing. But what I always wondered is, why you have two people who have basically the same amount of impact, 
but one just can't seem to get over the concussion. They keep almost getting worse and worse. And the other person two weeks later is feeling fine. And I hear people saying, well, they're just kind of lazy or they're giving excuses. And that's not getting to the root cause. And what we did is we looked at our patients who have kind of a chronic concussion where they get a concussion, they feel confused, they just keep saying, I just don't feel right, I'm tired, the computer's bothering me, I have too much stimuli, but it's all things that are non-visual, and often they feel like people aren't really believing them, mm -hmm. and then they get bumped again, slightly, like I had somebody have a cabinet hit their head, and they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm back to square one, mm -hmm. and the hyperbarics helps heal the damage, but you're like, why was it so impactful for them? Mm -hmm. And it was fascinating. So Dr. Bogner and I talked about it. And actually through his genetic testing, he could find that that person had a chronic inflammatory gene process going on. And we simply were able to prescribe or recommend specific supplements that helped boost those genes. And it was wonderful. Suddenly, they don't have this chronic inflammatory right. process going on. And you hear this term inflammation over and over. And it's really all about that. It's about prevention of inflammation. And we have modifying uh, suggestions for that diet, stress, lifestyle. But then also, what is our genetic ability to reduce inflammation that has already formed? And we're looking at all of this, you know, because if you have inflammation formed, there's genes responsible for dealing with these free radicals. You know, what are your genes? Do you need one of those genes boosted with manganese or molybdenum? Um, and so uh, that's all these things we take into consideration. And Dr. Peterson, in closing out, I know you want to give our listeners some quick information about where you're located and how to get a hold of you. Well, if you go to the website, OxfordRecoveryCenter.com, you'll learn a lot, but you can call us at 248-486-3636, and you just ask for a no-fee discovery session where one of the nurses are going to sit down for an hour and listen to you. And our goal is to get to the root cause, what's really going on, and they come up with a plan of care for you. You don't pay anything for that. They'll help assist you with that plan of care, and then recommend what's necessary to help you get your life back or live the healthiest life you have potential to. And Dr. Peterson, you also mentioned your staff of 130 people who are involved in the day-to-day -day care of your patients. Yeah. And we have an amazing autism program too, which is, we talked about it before on the show. It's really exciting. And we have a full research team. We should have 10 research studies in about nine months being published. Dr. Tammy Peterson, thank you so much for joining us again, as always, on Where Healing Begins. Uh, and again, this great research that's unveiled by your medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner. Thanks, Dr. Bogner, for all your insights into that. We appreciate your time today, and we'll see you again on another edition of Where Healing Begins right here on WJR.